Okay. All right. Hello, today is August 12th, 2020. I'm Michael Walsh. I work at the Yonkers Public Library. I'm currently in Yonkers, New York, and I'm with Ruth Cambar, um, who is a representative of the Assyrian S Studies Association. She's an oral historian and an archivist of the Assyrian American diaspora. We are here with Darius Baba, and what's your wife's name? Barbara Baba. Barbara Baba. Um, before proceeding with the interview, could you just state your name and location? Darius Baba Jr. And where are you? I'm in Worcester, Massachusetts. Give your address. Do you want the address? No. Oh, uh, no, it's okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, do you give us permission to um, upload this interview to the Yonkers Public Library Digital Archive? Absolutely. Totally okay. Permission. Okay, great. Yeah. It'll also be available um, for the Assyrian Studies Association and also the Library of Congress. That's okay yes. with you? Okay. Yes, totally. Okay, terrific. Okay. So, when and where were you born? I was born in Yonkers, New York, on August 7, 1935. Where did you grow up in Yonkers? Like, which part of Yonkers did you live in? Essentially, uh, I was born uh, when my parents lived on no 14 Knoll Street, and at the age of five, moved to McLean Avenue, 100 McLean Avenue. And then, at the age of 15, moved to 1 Lawrence Street in Yonkers. So South, South Yonkers. Yeah, it was all in South Yonkers, um, essentially, to, until I was married. Did your family visit particular places in Yonkers? Well, we um, spent a great deal of time at, at our church. The, it was the Hungarian Presbyterian Church that re rented space from. Uh, on oh, um, Jackson Jackson Street, thank you. <laughs> uh, it was called we called it the Assyrian Presbyterian Church, and of course we uh, visited various parks in the city. Um, I spent many years at what is now or used to be Joe Eschew Park Pelton. prior to that Pelton Field at the corner of Park Hill and McLean Avenue. Um, the, we spent a great deal of time besides school at the Assyrian Club at 371 Riverdale Avenue. Can you ask the question, please? Um, was, what, that um, the, was that just about the parks originally? It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, okay. well, it's about parks and, you know, different places that you went to in Yonkers. But it's okay. Um, did you join any organizations in the city of Yonkers, like the Boy Scouts or something like that? Um, I myself, the only organization was the DMLA organization for a couple of years in high school. What kind of organization was that? Uh, my role, just my father was a Mason. And because of that, uh, we 
became a little active in the Dean Malay. As well as his mother and sister were in the Eastern Star. And where did you meet Darius? Oh. Uh, where did the Dean Malay meet? No, no. I, I, probably at the Masonic Temple on South Broadway. Yes. Okay. I know. I was in Triangle. I know where it is. Okay. okay. And then, yeah. then also this one, Police Athletic. Oh, for a couple of years we were in the Police Athletic League because of my father being a policeman. Uh, we were not active other than participating in some of the events they staged, uh, I believe, at Saunders Trade School. Um, for example, Gene Autry and Roy Rogers, physically, uh, two physically. separate occasions showed there with their horses, and that was uh, that was the basic program. But uh, other than that, we were not too school, active in the school. organization. Your school, he was active in activities at his school, so tell him what work. You were the president of the... I was president of the Male Glee Club at the Yonkers High School for three years. Um, and I was always a, from the seventh grade on through high school, I was always my class treasurer. And then you were the, pian the pianist for the Male Glee Club. Okay, and then also he has something else. The Westchester County Glee Club, which were from different schools. He, was, he went from Yonkers, it was Westchester County and Rockland County, and he was uh, chosen to sing in the Westchester Glee Club of kids from different schools. Great. Yeah, so now I'm going to ask some questions about your family. Mm -hmm. Who lived in your Yonkers household with you? Okay, my father, Darius Sr., my mother, Elizabeth, my eldest sister, Irene, an older brother, Norman, myself, and a younger brother, Daniel. What are your parents' full names, including your mother's maiden name? Uh, to the best of my knowledge, it was Darius Baba Sr. and Elizabeth Baba. She had no middle name. Her maiden, you want her maiden name? Yeah. Elizabeth Johanna, Y O U H H A N A dash Michael. The, the custom of the day when coming through immigration was, since they did not use the last names, um, you, part, you took your father's first name as your family name. And that's where they got the Michael from. But her official or unofficial last name was, she was born Elizabeth Johanna. Okay, thank you. Do your parents have any siblings or did they, your parents have any siblings? Uh, yes, my father had uh, three brothers, Daniel, who was the eldest, Nathaniel, who was the second, my father, Darius, and a younger brother, Nimrod. Are any of them still living? No, none. None are surviving. His mother had sibling. Had a sibling. Your mother's. Who's your mother's sibling? Mary. She had a sister named Mary. She's not living. None of them are living. What are your grandparents' names? Oh. Uh, Okay, my grandmother's ma uh, married name was Elizabeth. Listen, 
That's your, that's your grand, that's on your father's side. That's Elizabeth and Babilla Temo. That was Elizabeth's, yeah, that is your grandmother, yeah. Okay, we don't know her last name, but the family name was Babilla. If the father was- His, his first name was Babilla. The last name was Temu or Thomas, T-E-M-O-O. Thanks. And on his, mother's, on his mother's side, he had a, a grandmother named Esther. Yep, Esther. Her father died just before she was born. Your mother. His, my mother's father. His name was Michael. Um, Michael Johannan. Michael Johannan. Esther came to America. She left Elizabeth there and she came to America with her daughter, Mary. She married, I believe overseas, a gentleman named um, Ismael Tarwadi. He became a, a priest or a minister no. and they moved to Chicago. From, they came originally to Yonkers and then moved to Chicago. So his oh, group, he had a, very interesting. There's a lot of history about this Ishmael Katarwadi uh, from Chicago. It's online and it's uh, very, very interesting. <laughs> Not too positive. Not too positive. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's interesting to read though. She actually left her, Esther left Elizabeth there when she was about two or three years old. With an aunt in Baghdad. Yeah. Does your family have a religious background? Yes, we are. We're baptized, born Presbyterian. And do you still practice that religion? No, I now attend my wife's church in Worcester, Mass, which is St. Mary's Syrian Syriac, Syriac. Syriac Orthodox Church in Shrewsbury, Massachusetts. Um, were there any languages um, besides English spoken in your childhood home? Uh, as, uh, Aramaic or Syrian. Were there any language barriers between like your your parents and like the younger no. generations? No. Okay. None was. Well, I'll tell you this. My father was told by his commanding officer that he would have made him corporal, which back then was a big step, except if, if he had better command of the language. But he was only here for maybe a year or so before he went into the service. He went to France. He was in military police there. But that was the only uh, occasion that uh, problems with language ever came up. Other than that, there was no trouble in school uh, with, with my siblings or myself. What war was that, that he went into the service? First. The war he went oh, into. Oh, yeah, the first, war. first World War. He actually wasn't a citizen when he went into the war. He was not a citizen. And when he came back, he went into Spartanburg, I think, North Carolina or South Carolina. And they made him a citizen then, but he yeah, was not a was. citizen. And he was a military policeman. And then several years after that, he took the police exam and got to be a policeman in Yonkers. Thank you. Oh, really? Wow, that's really interesting. What schools did you attend in Yonkers? Which schools? Okay, wait a minute. Okay, I yeah, so it. now with the education part. Okay, okay, you're an educator. Give us a minute. Give us a minute. Yep. Give us a minute. Here it is. Okay. Okay, education. Okay, I started off at number three school, kindergarten went to number 13 school at the uh, other half of my first year, uh, 
went to 13 Annex, Hawthorne Junior High, and Yonkers High School. Was Yonkers High School on Linden Street then? Was it on Linden Street then? Yes. Did you pursue a post-high school education? After high school. Where, where did you go to school after high school? Oh, I went to Westchester Community College, which at the time was on Battle Hill in White Plains. What did you study? Uh, I had a degree in business administration, an associate's degree. And then what did you do when you graduated? Where did you work? Uh, I, I started off at Macy's in White Plains. And okay, we're a little lost here. Hold on. It's all right. I'm fine. Started off at Macy's in White Plains for a couple of years. Uh, went into the service for two years from 1956 to 58. Then when I came back out, went back to Macy's and uh, at the same time I was attending Pace College in New York. Uh, then I uh, trying to think. Then you got oh, you worked, you worked in New York City, yeah. Yeah, I worked in New York City for National Aniline Company a chemical manufacturers. Allied chemical. Allied. Allied chemical. No, Allied came at After Geige. No. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, I think that... After Allied, he worked at Geige Chemical in Ardsley. And then where? Then we moved to Massachusetts. We got married in Massachusetts. He moved to Massachusetts after he was working at Geige. At Geige? Which was, yeah, which was, we got married in August of 63, and we moved to Massachusetts in November of 64. Darius, where did you serve in the service? Where were you? Uh, in Alaska, before it was a state. <laughs> okay. What was a pioneer. Branch of the armed services. Army. Army. Um, do you know anything about your parents' schooling? Very, very little. If they attended anything in Iran before they came, well, my father anyway, uh, it might have been some sort of um, schooling provided by missionaries. And then when they came to America, I think they probably uh, attended high school for a year or two to acquire a better knowledge of the English language and uh, never proceeded to get degrees or anything like that. Um, so did they, or did you live close to any other Syrian families? In Yonkers? Is it close to any other Assyrian families in Well, Yonkers? my uncle lived across the street from us, but um, where we were, where I was born on Knoll Street, there were a number of Assyrian families up and down the street. Uh, and it was not far from uh, Getty Square. So uh, between that and Knoll Street, there were numerous Assyrian families and businesses uh, in that area. Thanks. Okay. Oh, I, you know what? We forgot one thing. When he was telling the places that he lived, actually, after we were married, after um, Lawrence Street, it was Tibbetsburg Park we lived at, and then Van Portland. Okay. Oh, okay. Thank you. On the head of Portland? Can't hear you, Ruth. On the hill in Van Cortland, Van Cortland Park. By, um, 
No, 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 no. I think it was 391 Van Cortland or something like that. It was not far from uh, the Bronx line. It was near the Bronx line. Okay. Wasn't it? Okay. Um, Ruth, did you want to ask the Assyrian cultural identity questions? So, what, Darius, what does it mean to you to be an Assyrian? Well, I'm um, very proud of my heritage. Uh, go to, go, goes back a long, long way, as you know. And um, we, uh, I know of our accomplishments as a um, as a, a nation, and uh, many recognize us as probably being the first empire, if that's a, a plus. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, other than that, Your language. Uh, yeah, I still speak the language, and um, uh, many people are, are of, of different ethnic backgrounds all over the world we are learning, especially in Europe, um, are studying the Aramaic language. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not the dead language that we get <laughs> credit for. Okay. Yes, our church, in our church, they still speak Aramaic, which is the language Jesus spoke, so it's, it's a big deal. <laughs> And um, do you read any of the Assyrian language? Do you read Assyrian? No, unfortunately not. My father had an Assyrian Aramaic typewriter, believe it or not. Uh, we donated that after his passing to the University of Chicago, who has a great Assyrian uh, collection section collection. Yeah, the Asher Paul Library. Yeah, but we can't trace it. It seems like I think they asked about it and they didn't really know exactly where it was or something like that. But he did. I even saw I even saw the typewriter. For the name of somebody, uh, a contact, I will check with him. Okay. okay. I yeah. will um, they used to do, Ruth, they used to do the Assyrian star on that. Can you say that louder? I'm sorry. They used to type the Assyrian star, the Assyrian part of it, not the English, of course, but that's right. what it was used. That was, it was used for that, plus taking minutes and stuff at the club. And church. And church. And church as well. Assyrian star, Michael, is a periodical that for a while came out of Yonkers and it reported on Assyrian communities across uh, the states. Uh, F informational F FYI. Ruth, FYI. I was the reporter from Massachusetts. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Not ever knowing Darius Babb, that's for sure. This was way before Darius Babb. Very cute. How did you two meet? at an Assyrian American Federation convention in Boston. That's a long story. Okay. <laughs> the first thing, Ruth, the first thing I saw on him was his shoes. <laughs> and then we'll go, and then we'll go from there another time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. Uh, and how do you explain to non-Assyrians that you're an Assyrian? Well, uh, the first thing they say is, oh, you're Syrian, and I have to correct that first. Um, then I go, you know, Ruth, uh, it's funny. I, I can, if I encounter people who were born and uh, in today's climate, um, I have to be very careful from nations that you would not think had any knowledge of our, my background. Um, if I say Assyrian, they'll go like this, meaning they, know, they understand it's from way long ago. 
and um, I mean this in a positive way. This has happened to me even from ethnic minorities who you would think being born overseas might not have had exposure or education that would have included that. They know more about it than American, than, than American yeah. born children do. I, I understand that. I've had a similar experience with a man in New Orleans asking oh. what I was once, and I told him, and he started speaking to me in Assyrian. Really? <laughs> it was incredible. Um, another Mark, another I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. That's it. I was going to say another aside story. My son, my our youngest son lives in Virginia, and he's a partner in a company, and uh, he was invited to a Christmas party the first year he was a partner, and he couldn't go for other reasons. So he uh, contacted the host, who was another partner, and said, I'm so sorry I couldn't come to the party. We had previous plans, blah, blah, blah. And so the, the host said to him, who had, an, who had an Italian name, said to my son, would you mind telling me what nationality you are because of Baba, okay? So my son said, well, you probably won't guess. So rather than putting you through all that, I'm Assyrian. The Italian gentleman said, I'm part Assyrian. My <laughs> son said he almost fell off the chair. That's great. But it, what it was, was I think the, uh, Darius will tell you, he knows more okay. the history. When the, um, Muslims invaded Europe, uh, um, they got into, uh, you probably know the history, the eastern part of Europe anyway, and this Italian man, um, his background goes to Venice and that area, which you're familiar with. Yeah. And uh, it turned out there were Assyrians who were conscripted by the uh, Ottomans to fight for them. And rather than starve or die or be executed, they joined the army. Wow. They got as far as Venice. The Muslims were turned back. These guys said, hey, let's stay here. It's good place as any. And that's where his Assyrian roots yeah, came his, from. Yeah, his ancestors were Assyrian, and one of them got into the army and went to Italy. And so, and, but he knows his history at least. He knows his part of Assyrian. That's really that's very interesting. Wow. <laughs> and um, so, did you grow when you were growing up? Did you have any traditional practices that were Assyrian in your household? Any practices that your parents did that were traditional in your household? Well, obviously food was almost entirely um, Middle Eastern, I'll say. Um, my mother was an excellent cook and uh, to the point of uh, being embarrassing because whenever there was a church function, people would call out, we want Elizabeth rice or chata or whatever she happened to make and it was you know the other woman worked very hard too uh <laughs> but they would many of them would call out for her particular items we still make domas i make the grape leaves and the cabbage and the other things we make chata with my granddaughter who loves it and, and we make Bushawa and we make Riza and we judge Oh, I make judge Yeah. My mother in law taught me everything. Good. Actually, actually, Billy Sarge's mother taught me the grape leaves. The grape leaves? Isha. Yeah. yeah. And do you your own Mesta or do you buy it? I make it. <laughs> I make the cheese too, the cheese with the seeds in it. Yeah. You don't no. put it in the ground though. <laughs> Say that no. <laughs> I like no. that in years. Oh my God. Um, 
Tushia, I, I make Tushia every single fall for, since we were married practically. Uh, Alice David comes down and does it with me. Uh, she takes them back to Yonkers and uh, we sells have a, she sells them at the church there. And um, that's a fundraiser for her. And we spend a long weekend, Columbus Day weekend. So if you're here, come down and we'll make Tushia. <laughs> Good. Sounds, I would love it. It's pickled um, tomatoes, green tomatoes, Michael, etc. And do you um, make it spicy? Make what? Do you make it spicy? No, no. And actually, when when we do it, because my family's from Turkey originally, so we do it. Um, we do cauliflower, carrots, uh, peppers. And I use the wax peppers, which are thicker. Yellow peppers. Uh, carrots, garlic, dill, um, cauliflower, carrot, celery, celery. Yeah, I've yeah. She's under her breath. She said, cauliflower. <laughs> yeah, no, my granddaughter loves the cauliflower. She picks it all out when the jar is open. So this year, I made her a half gallon of cauliflower just cauliflower <laughs> and um have you ever eaten a syrian food outside of oh, your wait a, minute. wait a minute i made harissa i make harissa <laughs> what else do we make there we make i make just about everything from especially from irene's cookbook but and you and you know what that is and but i used to watch my mother-in-law make everything like the chadra recipe in the cookbook is different i actually watched her make it step by step. We have a, a cute photo of her with a chef's hat on making the agenda. That's great. That's great. I miss it. Somebody over well, hasn't made it in, in a while. I'll, if I make it, I will send you some. <laughs> it's too hot here to make anything now. So. <laughs> and so how about Assyrian music or and dance? OK. Uh, I, I, lo I love our music is so influenced by the Turkish music more than the Arabic from uh, Iraq and Syria, for example. Uh, and uh, well, um, along with the Turkish, the Armenian, um, there is I, I, not having really studied it, I can't tell you how much of it is genuine Assyrian. Well, Shekhani, the Shekhani is. Yeah, that, that's one particular dance. But uh, other than that, it, it's, it's probably more Turkish Armenian that where we grew up on. Um, and um, not the synthesized stuff that you get today right and, uh, and then on the original instruments now um, my son-in-law plays the kanun which is the string like a zither uh, and he's excellent at it uh, they play turkish music his his brother who's not married he he's a dentist and they uh, my son-in-law is a civil engineer but they're real love is having a little band or orchestra so we've been very lucky we have enjoyed that along the years and they used to play picnics and everything and uh one of my cousins played the oud and then whoever could play the the dumbag, the dumbag would play that but it was always for a, a my son-in-law before he was my son-in-law his brother my cousin etc cetera, etc cetera. so we've always had music around us <laughs> Right. And did you ever listen when you were a kid to Jerry Karam play? Did you ever hear Karam play? Karam? Yes, I did. On a three string instrument, which everybody, the whole place just shut right down just to hear him play. That's what Abana's son plays, the three string instrument. Does he? Yeah. We have a new priest here, Ruth, and he came just before uh, Corona. He was supposed to come in March, but he came January 15th with his family. His son plays that three-string instrument. Oh. oh. From Yonkers? No, no, no. 
New York they church. Came, they came from, no, he came from a village in Syria near Homs, a very small village. Okay. And his wife and three boys came. We, it took three years to get him vetted to come to America. And finally he came under a religious visa. And so he, like I say, he was supposed to come March 15th. He came January 15th and he just missed not being able to come. Wow. So, yeah. So questions, where were your parents born? In a small village called Charagushi, uh, which as of 20 years ago, according to an Assyrian scholar, Eden Nabi, who's up in yeah, um, Harvard, uh, that the village still existed. Uh, God knows what's happened in the past 20 years, but uh, it's still there. And so they were both from the same village? Yes. Over there before they came here? Or did they uh, Okay, my father, came directly from Charagushi. Um, I don't know how many stops he made along the way to get to America. Um, my mother was, we don't know the reasons why, whether it was financial or whatever, was left with an aunt, her mother's sister in Baghdad as a very young child maybe three years old or so. And she lived there for a number of years uh, before she finally was picked up by that Reverend uh, Syrian David. Minister, David. He was a missionary. Who picked up a bunch of orphans on his route to America, which took uh, a number of many, many months, if not a, over a year, but they went through from Baghdad to Iraq, to um, India, to Greece, Greece to Egypt, Egypt, and then Greece. Croatia, Ruth, and um, finally America. Ruth, did De uh, Christopher ever send you the thing of her journey? No. The paper? I I'm don't, sorry? I don't think so. I can check again, but I don't think so. If not, I'll send it to you. I made a copy of it. And I just got it. Actually, I just got it from him today. Maybe I can forward it to you. It's very interesting, <laughs> to now, say the least. Is, did she come down to Baghdad in the Great Running? Do you know? She, if if she was born in 1906, okay. okay, and if she went to Baghdad when she was about three years old, according to whatever we've heard. She was left by her mother. Her mother came to marry that guy, the Gasha, and um, uh, left her. She left her there and came with the bigger sister. So if she was born in 1906, she would have gone to Baghdad around 1909. Okay, so basically, Ruth, I got this information today from Christopher, okay, and um, he answered some questions and the most interesting part I was just telling you was that um, Elizabeth arrived at Ellis Island, Island on 8-1-1921. She was one of several children brought to the USA by Reverend Jacob David, a fellow Assyrian who had been sent by uh, Presbyterian, Presbyterian missionaries to a, a ten college at Brown University. Then he returned to Udmina area as a missionary himself. She, she went to live with her mother, Esther, in 1921, who had remarried after Elizabeth's father, Michael, died soon after she had been born. Esther's second husband was Reverend Esmiel Tarawadi. Esther and Tarawadi arrived in the United States in 1911 along with his two sisters and Esther's other daughter, Mary, who was also called Feltu. Okay, now this is the place that she went to. Uh, it talked about her journey, about, the, about going to Baghdad. Uh, she, you can hear us, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so anyhow, her journey 
was uh, she was one of the orphans. It's, we do not we do know that whether she was one of the orphans orphans as or was added to the group in Baghdad. Her journey included Baghdad, Basra, Karachi, Karachi. Kar I'm sorry, Karachi, Port Said, Athens, and then Patras, Yugoslavia on June 24th, 25th, before arriving in New York. Her name appears on the SS Cal Calbria Manifest as Elishna or Elishwa Esmiel, the other guy's name, uh, as a pupil. Her destination on this manifest is to go to the Tarwat, to Esmiel Tarwadi. He is said to be her father. Technically, he was her stepfather. And they lived at 19 Washington Street in Yonkers, New York which was an address of other Assyrian immigrants. Oh, so Chris, Chris and Kim, I think live there. I'm sorry? I think Yon and Kambar also live there. At, okay. Before so he I, married, et cetera. I will send you this uh, email Chris sent me today, okay? Thank you. Okay. I'm wondering if Almas Benjamin uh, was with them. Almas married, um, my uncle TV. She was I, Joseph. Yeah. Uh, she had a very similar path. Yeah, probably. So if <laughs> you're coming from Bakuba or, or Baghdad, it's interesting. Um, I wonder if she joined the orphans from Bakuba and they were. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Chris has some information from this about this. Uh, uh minister the uh, missionary I, I i you know being away and not not seeing the thing we've given him so much stuff there's a picture i think chris shared it with you of my mother-in-law standing with this woman whoever it was that she traveled with we don't know who it was but um that woman and her are standing in Greece at the Parthenon, and we we took a picture in the exact same spot as where she was standing. So that was kind of neat. I don't think I've seen that picture. I don't have. Yeah, I think, yeah, and it's written in Assyrian, so it was translated. But Chris has uh, all that stuff. You have to send me if you can get a copy of it. I'd love to see it. I really would love to see it. That's incredible. That would be wonderful for the genocide exhibit. Awesome. Mm. To show yeah. them, and um, so, what year did your dad come over? Do you know, Darius? Yes, I do. Nineteen fifteen. Nineteen right? fifteen. Um, no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. 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 I don't have it here. What do they want? I think 1915. Yes, he came in 1915. He joined the uh, uh, the army in 1918 or 17, something like that. Yeah. Okay. And um, so, do you know of any hardships your family members experienced in Cherigusha? Um, you know, they never talked about it, Ruth. I think in an attempt to probably forget what they went through. My father's youngest brother, Nimrod, was uh, killed in a skirmish with the Turks, either the Turks and the Kurds uh, against the Christians at the time in that area. And um, he was in a dug out or a trench and they told them don't stick your head up there's a German uh, sharpshooter out there and the poor soul stuck his head up and got a bullet in it and so he we never knew him or you know met him or anything that was the last uh, my father saw or heard of of him too so um, what actually my my parents experience they never spoke of. They only, if they made reference to their childhood, it was good events. It was positive things. Um, 
And yet we know that um, not only 1915, but uh, maybe 10 years earlier in that area, there was a big flare-up. 1895. Between uh, Christians and non-Christians. And uh, even well before that, uh, on and off over the centuries. But um, they, they, the only memories that I have are of growing up in, oh, our life was, was good. Uh, we, we, had, we ate well. Uh, it was comfortable. There was never a reference made to any persecutions or direct uh, intervention by um, non-Christian groups. I understand. But, uh, I, I have the same experience un until after the fact. I heard stories um, from cousins, etc. My grandmother never spoke about her sister being killed or her aunt. I never heard that um, growing up. So. Ruth, do you think it was just because they wanted to shut any bad memories out or what? I, I do, and I think they really wanted to assimilate and be American and, and just start again. I really, they saw it as an opportunity 1917, there was a, uh, a parade for something with a downtown. We used to have parades all the time. Now we don't have any. But the parade, uh, they had a, 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 an Assyrian flag, supposedly, and they had the American flag. And every single, there was a lot of people here then, and we were called Assyrian. And uh, they all had the American flag in their lapel. And I never saw my grandfather with a suit on without the American flag in his lapel. Yeah. They wanted to be American. They loved this country. Yeah. They really did. I know. And um, have you ever been able to return to your family's homeland? Have you gone to Iran? No. We got to Turkey. That's as close as I ever got. And one year, that Eden Nabi from uh, Yale, uh, Harvard, an Assyrian woman, used to take groups over to Iran. That's where she was from. And she asked me one year if I'd be interested in going. I said, absolutely, yes. And this would have to be shortly after the turn of the century. And uh, then things really fell apart. And uh, unfortunately, we never, never were able to make that trip. Yeah. But she knew, she knew Cherigushi. She had been there before. It was still, um, there were still people there living in that village. And uh, I came that that's the closest I came to ever going back. Ruth, did you get the copy of all the envelopes that we got, that Chris had sent? Did you get a copy of all those envelopes with the addresses and things? No. Really? Well, no. there's a whole bunch of them. Yeah, unfortunately, no. No letters. No letters, just the envelopes. But they're from various places, from Tehran to Charagushi and back and in Baghdad and uh, other areas uh, that were relevant at the time. Um, and uh, back to Yonkers, one letter to uh, our Reverend Yako Gasha um, to um, various different people in, in, in the Yonkers area, too. And uh, did you send these to me verse, through regular sure. email? Yes. I did, yes. Email? I thought I did, okay. Okay, the picture of her, okay, this has the picture of her in, um, you know what I'm going to do, Ruth, because I've printed them? I would just mail them to you. There she is standing in front of the- That's incredible. Room. And then this is the back of the postcard written in Assyrian. 
and that then um, there's this, and it was, we don't know, it says, Athens, dear beloved and loved sister Elizabeth, I believe you, I believe you always will remember this day in Athens. This is written, this is the translation of the Assyrians from reading it. Beautiful places we saw. We had a very good time in all our trip and I want you to remember all that. We had a good time in Baghdad, Basra and other cities until we reached America. We were together except, except this picture to remember us by and remember where we had it t taken. I'll love you until I die. Your sister, Gand Gandab, Gandab. So this is who she traveled with. She went to California. Yeah, this woman went to California. I think they were in touch for a while. But I'm gonna send all this information to you. Um, th there's a letter from this uh, Reverend David Jacobs. It says, this is to testify that Mrs. Elizabeth D. Babo, who now resides at 14 Knoll Street, Yonkers, came, to, came with me to America in 1921. The last port from which we took the steamer was Petros, Greece, and the name of the steamer was Calabria, arriving in New York on August 1st, 1921. It took nearly two weeks before I could get my party out of Ellis Island. This, uh, Mrs. Babb's maiden name, as far as I can remember, was Elishwa Elizabeth Michael. In Persia, prior to this world war, all persons were called by their first name, but in writing, as in a passport, they generally attach their father's name to the first name. They never used family names. I trust the above information will be su sufficient to assist Mrs. Baba in obtaining her naturalized papers, Reverend Jacob David, Chicago, and that's October 1st, 1940. Wow. So there's a lot of stuff here. Okay. Um, there's like, uh, there were, you know what, there was actually letters with this, but it was decided that it would be better to throw them away than to read them, which I was a little upset about, but it, it was their choice. Now there's a letter here, here uh, and it looks like Father George Bacchus of Shanshagenia uh, in Rezia. It's, it's definitely in Iran somewhere. Rezia. I'm sorry? Rizaya is Ermia. Oh, okay. And then there's one from YD Oshana, 70 Gaini Avenue, Tehran, to the editor of the Assyrian Star. And then there's another one that came from Kurush Schlemen uh, in, from Baghdad. There's an address there. There's a lot of envelopes with addresses. I'll send these all to you. Thank you. And then you'll have the paper copy. All right. Okay. <laughs> Let me fin I'll finish up. And so, growing up, uh, did you put what um, community, Yonkers community, as you know, Assyrian activities did you participate in? Other than the, the actual church? Other than the church was um, well, it would have to be the uh, the Syrian Federation Club on uh, Riverdale Avenue. That was the only other. So your parents did with Mr. Dartley. Huh? Your parents did with Mr. Dartley. Oh, my father was um, a member of the Syrian Educational Federation, which worked very closely with. Um, Barbers Assyrians from New Jersey, and they uh, they would meet periodically a couple of times a year. Uh, they would raise funds to send for schooling or education purposes in Iran and and the, I should say the Middle East yeah. uh, because of. There was an orphanage in Beirut, the Assyrian American yeah. orphanage in Beirut that they were big supporters of. And my mother-in-law and father-in-law met Mr. and Mrs. Dartley and they, they socialized a little bit and they became friends. And um, so 
do you remember any events at the club, Darius? Well, numerous picnics. Um, you know, nothing too big because the building itself was not built or there was, it was just a, a house that was kind of converted. Uh, I don't know if you were ever in it. That was 371 River. Park, yeah, Park Ave, right in back of uh, Hawthorne uh, Junior High School. And um, so to hold functions inside was difficult at best. Uh, mainly it was picnics held in the backyard. And um, that was the, the big deal was mainly picnics. And um, did, so you said you connected with the New Jersey community. Was there any activity with any other communities in the United States? Um, yeah, he married me. <laughs> it would be uh, uh, New Britain, Connecticut, yeah. and occasionally uh, Philadelphia, but rarely, uh, mainly Connecticut, uh, New Britain. And um, was that through picnics or through what activity, Darius? Picnics, dances, uh, weddings. Okay. And where are your parents buried? Is there a particular cemetery? Yeah, I, I, I can't believe What's I What's the can't name of the cemetery? The They're all in the same one down. Um, oh, God. Is, would you remember the name of the cemetery most people are buried in? Is it the one in Yonkers? Yeah. Oakland. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. My brother-in-law, my brother-in-law Norman, is not buried there, but no, his mother and father. Uncle Tom died in California. He's buried there. They brought the body back. My uncle Dan and his wife are buried there. Are buried there. Uh, about 100 feet away from my folks. You know, one other thing that uh, for the genocide situation part of it, Uncle Tom and Auntie Bessie, who you probably remember, um, he was Nathaniel. They had a son that was killed by the Turks before they came to America. I didn't know. She said, yeah, she said his name was Frederick. I don't know. And they ended up in what town in California? <laughs> Uh, Modesto or Turlock. Modesto or Turlock. Her, her nephew or somebody lived there. Yeah, her nephew. And my brother-in-law Norman was sick. We were in Massachusetts. Uncle Tom didn't want to go to California. She didn't want to come to Massachusetts. Because uh, we would have had Uncle Tom stay, not with us, but he could have stayed in Massachusetts with us. But it just didn't work out that way. Now, he lived in um, Yonkers for a little while, correct? I he think lived all, 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 all his, his life. life. I, I mean, it's in, from when he came to America. Yeah. From when he came to America, yeah. And I would say they probably moved in the late 1960s to California. They moved just before uh, Norman died, 1977 he died? In the 70s, because he... Norman, my brother-in-law Norman was helping to take care of them because they didn't have any kids and they couldn't do it anymore themselves and Norman was sick, he wasn't able to do it. So that's basically why they moved. No, that makes sense, I understand. And so if I had to ask you what Assyrian items and also traits you may have inherited from your family, what would you say? My appearance. <laughs> I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. My appearance. Your appearance. I have definitely Assyrian features. Um, Short legs, long torso. <laughs> That's Assyrian. <laughs> although I've been told on trips to Turkey um, by local residents that, uh, including our our. Uh, Tsunami. No, the trip, uh, the man who put the trip together. Oh, um, tour guide. Who was a uh, uh, an officer in the Turkish government for tourism. In any event, when mm -hmm. he looked at us and he asked us, well, we were 
preparing our itinerary, um, he looked at me and he said, Persian, you know, so obviously uh, they have me nailed down. Yeah. So yeah, they said the same with Norman. And when it came to Barbara, who was 30% Greek, that's a grounds, um, <laughs> that she was Greek. Every, it, we, if no matter where we went, we were with Alice and Norman David. Alice was Turkish or Iranian. Yeah. Darius was Persian most of the time. I was always Greek. Hey, Greek lady. Hey, Greek lady, can I shine your shoes or something like that? And, and I sort of had an idea I had Greek blood in me, but I didn't realize it was 30%. That's quite a bit. My grandfather's family went to Cyprus. And, and on my DNA, it goes right to Cyprus, not to Greece. Interesting. And so how do you think living in diaspora has impacted your life? Well, um, it's kind of made me unique and stand out in a crowd because uh, people will just take one look and say, you know, uh, you're not American <laughs> looking. Uh, and then I explain what my background is. And um, for the most part, uh, they, they buy it. They, <laughs> have a choice. Uh, so it, it gives me a little, little uniqueness in, in a crowd. Um, and I, I certainly have a, a history that I can be proud of, although we were noted for our, our ruthlessness when we occupied. Ruth, can you repeat the question, please? No, he's okay. He's, I, I, I'm not okay. But, I, I don't remember what you said. Uh, what it's like being a Syrian living in diaspora. Okay. okay. Yeah, and the fact that I, I speak a language which uh, scholars claim that Christ probably spoke when he was living. Um, it doesn't pay the rent, but it's, it's a unique quality. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. And do you ever think that the Assyrians will get um, a space for them, independent government in the, in the Middle East? Tell her what the patriarch said. About she wants to know if we'll ever have a country. Oh. <laughs> He's going to tell you. Okay, tell me. A patriarch of Barbara's church, who is the equivalent of the Pope for us. Um, one evening after everybody had left. He was staying at my parents' house. He was house. staying at our parents' house. And his given name, baptized name, was Senharib. Now, many people in Barbara's church don't like to concede that they probably have some Assyrian blood in them because of the hostilities between the two churches right. hundreds of years ago. Um, they, they, it was really uh, ugly. Times. Don't go, uh, ugly time. And, but he said, if I thought there was a chance that we could have our nation back again. Assyria. Assyria. I would carry a gun. And I said, this is coming from the patriarch of the church. Yeah. He said, the only problem is who's the first one to be president? There'd be another war. He also said, what language would they speak? Would it be Eastern or Western dialect? Would church, you know, would be, there would be so many problems that it wouldn't happen, basically, is what he said, which is true. Sad. We are working on unifying um, a lot of young people. Assyrians are participating in events to see beyond religion, to see beyond any of our differences, to bring Assyrians together, uh, Eastern, Western, etc. So uh, it's interesting. I've been sitting in some webinars with them, 
and mm. listen to their discussions afterward. I think a lot of people, because of the ISIS situation in the Middle East, have started to think a little bit like we have people from Lebanon and they say, don't call me Syrian, I'm not Syrian. Uh, you can call me a Syrian or Ashuri or so yo yo, we have so many names. I mean, our church now, because of all the names and all the people from different places, they use Syriac, which is the name of a language. It's not really, I don't like the name, but it's there. But when I go inside, it's the same thing as it was before when it was Assyrian. Yeah, well, it's the same language. But one, one might be liturgical too, and I understand that they're making a distinction. Yeah. Uh, okay, and is there anything or a particular family story that you may not have mentioned or something we haven't asked about that you'd like to tell us today? Can I just say one thing? And then he'll think about what he's going to say. We just, Jennifer, my daughter, remembered that it, my brother in law Danny had made a family tree and we didn't know where it was. And uh, we found it. <laughs> Somebody found it. And so, my brother in law, I'm going to send these papers to you also. My brother in law, Danny, explained that he made this family tree. So, it came in the, it came the other day and I printed it. And there, it, Darius's grandfather was Babila, Babila Tamu, and he had a sister. So the original, great, the original, it would be great, -grandfather. great grandfathers was Thomas and Mervad, okay? And they only had two children. Thomas and Mervad had two children. One was Babila and one was a girl named Mayhad, Mad, Marhad, Marhad. And this family tree shows all these people and I started looking them up. And they're really close relatives. Darius didn't even know about them. Well, it came out that uh, they, their children are amazing because I found them. Unfortunately, one of them died last year or else he would have had more information. And one that's the same on the family line is uh, Irene and Norman and Danny and Darius is a girl named Bertha, Jesse and Grace and their last name was David. And they, I think one of them just died recently and she married an American man. I got an office on the internet and they have two, they, she had two sons, Kevin and Brian, and they're both attorneys in Turlock. I will be getting in touch with them because I have a phone number. That's great. And we, and we didn't know any of this till the other day. That's really great. Well, look, Darius came up on my niece's DNA and I, I'll tell you in another time, Based on this interview today, I know how. Oh, you know how? <laughs> we'll have to talk about it. Okay. <laughs> right. Michael, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Michael, thank you. Nice, thank nice you. to meet you.